Welcome to the Project Censored Show on Pacifica Radio. I'm your host, Mickey Huff. This week on the program, we dedicate the hour to analyzing how big media have been facilitating the Israeli war crimes in Gaza. And we'll talk about corporate media's dehumanization of Palestinians. We'll talk about a lack of historical context and repeating hearsay as fact that make this current tragedy unintelligible to many in the United States. Later in the program, we're going to have Menar Adlai from Mint Press News with us. We'll also have Robin Anderson, uh, and we'll be uh, opining on what's been happening in Israel-Palestine. But we start today's program uh, with Project Censored's Associate Director, Andy Lee Roth. And Andy Roth has recently written, also has written a piece about what's happening in uh, Gaza, in Palestine. Uh, just very quickly, I want to properly introduce Andy Lee Roth. He is the Associate Director of Project Censored and coordinates our Campus Affiliates Program, uh, um, a news media research network of several hundred students and faculty at two dozen colleges and universities across North America. Roth's research and writing has been published in a variety of outlets, including Index on Censorship, In These Times, Yes Magazine, Media, Culture, and Society, and the International Journal of Press and Politics. He earned a PhD in sociology at the University of California, Los Angeles, a BA in sociology and anthropology from Haverford College. Roth serves on the board of the Media Freedom Foundation and Weave News. Andy Lee Roth, welcome back to the Project Censored show. Thanks, Mickey. It's always a pleasure to join you on the show. Indeed. And Andy, um, recently, since the October 7 attack from Hamas, on Israel and the retaliations that have taken place, we at Project Censored have made a statement regarding Western news coverage of Gaza, particularly in the US. And I'm going to read that statement briefly to frame today's program. As violence in Israel and Gaza continues to escalate, corporate news outlets in the United States have consistently failed in their duty to provide Americans with the crucial historical context and diversity of viewpoints necessary to fully understand the unfolding tragedy there. One-sided reporting that favors the narratives and voices of Israeli officials and their allies, frequent and unquestioning reporting of sensational but unconfirmed events, and an almost total omission of the key historical facts that led to the crisis have played a major role in misinforming American citizens. Corporate media have also failed to accurately portray the United States' role in the ongoing conflict between Israel in Palestine more generally, certainly historically, and we at Project Censored condemn this massive failure of the corporate media. And Andy Lee Roth, um, certainly a good time to bring you in. You've recently penned a piece um, making sense of the establishment news media's distorted coverage of Gaza. And you actually start that piece with, with an interesting uh, story about something that was being covered in the media right around this time, um, that, that kind of shows um, you know the lack of attention and and the distorted focus that we that we see in many many cases. Andy Lee Roth, can you please you know, sort of start out the the story and start out how we need to be making sense of the media's distorted coverage in Gaza? Yes, thanks, Mickey. Uh, I don't usually watch much television broad broadcast news, but I was watching uh, Monday night the ninth um, because of the the violence in Gaza, the Hamas attack, attack and the disproportionate Israeli response um, that began on the 7th. So Monday night, I was watching one of the major cable news networks, and um, there was horrifying and graphic footage of the deadly airstrikes by Israeli defense forces on Gaza. And I was taking that in and processing that when the news story cut quickly with almost no transition. The next story that appeared that evening on the news was a man rowing his 1,200 pound pumpkin down the Missouri River. Um, and needless to say, there was a kind of jarring disconnect between the two news items. The, the reality, uh, when you think about it, of what the leveled buildings and streets uh, in Gaza look like, what that means in human terms as a result of those IDF attacks. And then, <clears throat> you know, this kind of thing that Project Censored would probably report as, excuse me, junk food news, 
<clears throat> excuse me, um, that we would probably report as junk food news, even though a pumpkin would normally be on the healthier end of the food spectrum. Um, and, and there was no kind of no signaled awareness of this disjuncture by uh, by the news program itself. It was just sort of like, oh, a bunch of Palestinians were blown up in their homes today and a man's rowing a pumpkin down the river to set a Guinness Book World Record. Um, so I think that that jarring disconnect tells us a lot about what's wrong with um, corporate news and the version of the world that it tries to sell to us as its sometimes audience members. Yeah, and uh, Andy Lee Roth, you write um, in the piece, corporate media, of course, have treated daily life in Gaza as, as essentially non-news. Um, <clears throat> everything goes through a certain filter, through a, a, a pro-Israeli uh, pro Israeli government, pro uh, is Israel's right to exist, uh, which, by the way, we're not contesting here, uh, Israel's right to exist. But we are, and you are specifically calling out the extraordinary sense of bias. And you actually invoke um, another theoretical concept that we've long written about at Project Censored. Um, and that is uh, the concept of unpersons borrowed from, from George Orwell's term. And then that even goes even further into um, Edward Herman and Noam Chomsky's discussion of about what, what worthy and unworthy victims are in, in the media. Could you unpack those and talk a little bit about those concepts as it relates to what's happening uh, Israel-Palestine, Andy Lee Roth? Right, so there's saturation coverage today in the so-called mainstream media uh, about events in Gaza, right? Uh, and that coverage has been driven by the violent actions of Hamas and the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. Um, but for decades, U.S. corporate media have treated Gaza and its inhabitants as as uh, unnewsworthy, not worthy of coverage, despite there being uh, now what I believe it's an 18 year Israeli and uh, blockade aided by Egypt of Gaza. Um, now, faulty biased news coverage doesn't create the inhumane conditions in Gaza. It did not create the violence that's tormenting the region now. Um, but this biased reporting indirectly perpetuates and multiplies human suffering in Gaza. And the argument I make in the, in the piece about making sense of the establishment media's distorted coverage of Gaza is that most Americans know nothing about Gaza. They not only probably don't know anyone who lives in Gaza, oh, there are, there are, of course, remarkable exceptions. We are a diverse nation um, with all kinds of ties to all kinds of places around the world, despite what many MAGA Republicans would have us believe or aspire to. Um, but, but most Americans know very little about Gaza. And uh, the result is they're not prepared to understand what's happening there. And this isn't just an argument that I'm making or that Project Censored is making. Um, there's a fantastic piece by John Collins uh, published by Truthout, John Collins of Weave News, um, who writes, who wrote uh, earlier this month about how uh, the exclusion of settler colonialism as a topic makes it difficult to understand what's happening in Gaza. Um, it means, uh, for instance, that uh, we don't understand ongoing attempts by Israel to displace or eliminate Palestinian people and replace them with new permanent settler societies, right? That's the core idea of settler colonialism. But that perspective is missing from most corporate news coverage of Gaza because the people who are most articulate at uh, at conveying uh, why settler colonialism matters don't count as newsworthy sources uh, by corporate definitions of, of news, right? Those are primarily um, uh, critical scholars and, uh, and activists who have advocated and developed the concept of settler colonialism as it applies to uh, Palestine, <laughs> Gaza, the West Bank in particular. You know, um, unfortunately, this entire subject of what's been happening in the Middle East, I mean, this goes back nearly 80 years. I mean, we can go back way further 
But as far as the 20th century, I mean, whether we go back to the history of Nakba, whether we go back to the 1967 war, um, we certainly at Project Censored have covered going back quite a ways, a couple of decades. And one of the things that Andy Roth, you point out uh, in this piece at projectcensored.org is that we at the project have have long been covering the underreported, the censored stories. And, and, and I wanna point this out because it underscores a key point you made and a key argument uh, that both you make, that Robin Anderson makes, we'll talk to her later in the program, is that the reason that so many people in the United States react the way they do in such a one-sided fashion is that they've been conditioned to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not as if we can pretend that it's the United States of amnesia, as Gore, uh, Gore Vidal would argue once upon a time, but it's difficult for people to remember things they never learned in the first place. And so a lot of the coverage of what goes on historically erases what's been happening there. It erases the existence uh, of Palestinians, of the Palestinian struggle. Again, you just talked some about the unpersons and worthy and unworthy victims issue. Um, maybe run down a couple just examples or just even in your mind, the significance of the historical context of the types of stories that we've been covering at Project Censored for at least 20 years. Yeah, so these are stories that Project Censored is highlighting because they've either been uh, uh, incompletely covered by the corporate media or ignored or marginalized entirely. Um, so, and I'll just reference these in terms of um, the yearbook where the story was featured as one of our top stories of that year. So from last year, the, the State of the Free Press 2023 yearbook, we have a story on the repression of Palestinian media, which involves some of the big tech companies, an issue that um, our colleague Omar Zaza uh, whose faculty at San Francisco State University is currently working on an entire book on that topic of the partnerships between Israel and big tech to uh, restrict flows of information and ultimately um, restrict freedom of information and expression. Um, we also know from top 25 stories of past years um, that there are proactive, uh, uh, basically I would say propaganda campaigns in the US by Israel and allies of the state of Israel um, to, to obscure uh, a complete understanding. So from the 2022 yearbook, we had a story about how Canary Mission was blacklisting uh, pro-Palestinian activists and thereby chilling free speech rights here in the United States. Uh, we know that Abby Martin um, uh, challenged uh, the BDS gag law in the state of Georgia, a story we covered in our 2021 yearbook. Um, the, uh, an Al Jazeera documentary that exposed the, the widespread influence of a pro, the pro-Israel lobby was um, censored, as we reported in the 2020 yearbook. Um, I could go on, but I'm just going to jump back a ways um, to a couple more stories. Um, we also know that U.S. aid to Israel is has been um, has been solidifying and reinforcing uh, the repressive occupation of Palestine. Um, and I think it's very interesting. Just a couple days ago, the Washington Post ran an op-ed by Josh Paul, a former U.S. State Department official who resigned earlier this month because of the State Department's role in what's happening in Gaza. Um, as Josh Paul uh, writes in this Washington Post op-ed, for going back to the Oslo Accords, the U.S. line has always been that the provision of uh, economic support and, and military weapons to Israel has been to, sec to provide security for peace. But as Josh Paul, this former State Department official, again, he resigned earlier this month mm -hmm. based on current events, said that the weapons and the, and the aid that Israel has received from the United States have actually promoted the growth of settlement infrastructure in the West Bank. And it's very hard to understand how uh, the ongoing bombardment, and we're all, I guess, in horror waiting the possibility of a ground invasion uh, by Israel, um, how uh, the, the deaths of civilians in Gaza uh, enhance the security of anyone in Israel or uh, uh, Palestine. So um, it's very interesting to see in these very official kind of 
establishment sources, like uh, 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 someone from the, the State Department publishing an op-ed in the Washington Post questioning what's going on. Uh, maybe there are cracks in these frames that uh, we're going to see some changes. And certainly, I think that's what um, your guests later on the show, uh, Manar Adley and Robin Anderson, are working hard to um, to 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 open up what the conversation we the conversations we have in the United States about Gaza, about Israel, about Palestine, so that we have a wider definition of who and what counts as newsworthy. Because we know right now that the corporate media's narrow definitions of newsworthiness are increasingly deadly. Absolutely. And while we laud the establishment press when they do cover this or when they do share a perspective that gives people in the United States and the West in general an opportunity to see the lops, how lopsided the coverage and support has been for Israel uh, overall, historically, I mean, uh, the hope is, is that more people will begin to pay attention. Maybe that's happening. But certainly, as you just illustrated, we at Project Censored have been highlighting the, the coverage of the independent press going back decades about how crucial the independent press is for these narratives to remind us uh, that there are so many uh, more worthy people and so many newsworthy issues and people that the Western press often ignore, censor, or cover in a distorted way. Andy Lee Roth, anything you'd like to leave um, our listeners with today before we move to the next segment? I think just to reiterate uh, a, a fundamental point made by the Society of Professional Journalists, the SPJ, that the job of, of news reporters, the job of journalists is to seek truth and report it. And one way that the SPJ specifies that is, is to say that reporters doing ethical journalism need to boldly tell the story of the diversity and magnitude of the human experience. And they do so by seeking sources whose voice are seldom heard. And I think as we continue to see um, not only the events taking place in Gaza, but the corporate establishment news media's coverage of them, keeping that in mind, are we hearing the diversity and magnitude of the human experience? Are we hearing voices that we otherwise seldom hear? Um, I think that's one way of measuring are, are the, the, the nation's biggest establishment outlets fulfilling their duties to us as citizens and the public? who need to be well-informed or are they failing? And just to put a slightly more positive spin on it, um, we do have independent news outlets as Project Censored and this program regularly champion and feature. Uh, we do have independent news outlets that do provide that diverse uh, views of that diversity and magnitude. Absolutely. Dr. Andy Roth, Associate Director of Project Censored, thank you so much for joining us today. Your recent piece at projectcensored.org, Making Sense of the Establishment News Media's Distorted Coverage of Gaza. Andy Roth, thanks so much for joining us today on the Project Censored show. Thank you, Mickey. 